a female in her 60s presents with breathlessness. What's the diagnosis? Let's go through the case. Firstly, we can see there are small bilateral pleural effusions. In the context of breathlessness, and given that this is bilateral, this raises the possibility of pulmonary edema. Now, if we look at the mediastinum, we can see a ring of calcification outlining the heart. This is suspicious for pericardial calcification. But what is the pericardium? This is a double-walled sac that envelops the heart and roots of the great vessels. In normal circumstances, this measures between 1 to 2 millimetres. And we can see a normal pericardium on this cardiac MRI cine sequence as this thin back line. The pericardium has several layers. The outer wall is known as the fibrous pericardium and is made up of connective tissue. The inner wall is a serous pericardium and is made up of a layer of epithelial cells that's reflected on itself. The inner layer is the visceral serous pericardium and the outer the parietal serous pericardium. In between the visceral and parietal serous layers is the pericardial cavity which contains a small amount of serous fluid. This reduces friction during contraction of the ventricles. Now what can cause calcification of the pericardium? Most causes are things that cause inflammation of the pericardium. More than 50% of cases are thought to be idiopathic, otherwise there are a range of causes, including infections such as TB or viral infection, iatrogenic causes including previous radiotherapy or cardiac surgery, connective tissue diseases, and metabolic causes such as uremic pericarditis. When the pericardium calcifies, this can prevent the ventricles from filling with blood during diastole, leading to a reduction in end diastolic volume. Now remember that the stroke volume is a volume of blood pumped from a ventricle in one heartbeat. And it is worked out by subtracting end systolic volume from the end diastolic volume. So this means a lower end diastolic volume means a reduction in stroke volume. Cardiac output is a product of stroke volume and heart rate, meaning we're also now dealing with a reduced cardiac output. So when the pericardial calcification interferes with ventricular filling, this can present with signs of both right and left heart failure and is known as constricted pericarditis. Echocardiogram is the first sign imaging test looking for signs such as a septal bounce, worse than inspiration. This can also be seen on cardiac MRI. CT can also be used to assess the degree of calcification, and in this case we can see diffuse calcification affecting the pericardium. A restrictive cardiomyopathy can cause similar physiology and clinical symptoms. Here the heart muscle becomes stiff rather than the pericardium, and the treatment is different. Some cases of constricted pericarditis are treated with surgery, however this is high risk and done in selected patients. The rest are medically managed. So the lesson here is not to miss calcification of the pericardium, which can be a sign of underlying constrictive pericarditis.